Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 100th Q tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, it's been a long road, but we've made it. 100. Today, we are going to cover Q Plugin Loader. What is Q Plugin Loader? Actually, what is what is a plugin? Well, if you go out to the documentation, read Q Plugin Loader, you'll find that uh, Q Plugin Loader loads plugins. Well, doesn't really help us a whole lot. So, what is a plugin? A plugin is kind of down the same alley that we've been tracing, which is uh, a DLL or an SO if you're in Linux and Unix, a system object. So let's say you have an application like QCreator and you want to make a plugin and you want to extend the functionality of this application. Like let's say this help menu, each one of these is a plugin. And when you click it, it does something specific. For example, if we click about QCreator, it shows this window. But if we click about plugins shows this window. So they do the same thing. There's probably a show window function in there somewhere, but they show two totally different windows, aka they do different functionality. Now I've come under some criticism in the past that I spent a lot of time talking and typing and trying to fix mistakes rather than teaching. So we're gonna just dive into some code I've got pre-written here. And if you guys like this format, we'll continue down this road. Now we've got a plugin and an application that uses that plugin. The first thing you know, I said, should say the first thing you should notice is that we have this plugin interface.h. This is a virtual class. First off, what's an interface? An interface is a contract. For example, let's think of a key as a contract. You put your key into the door and it turns the lock. That's a contract, meaning you have to have that key to open that lock or a very big sledgehammer, but we won't get into that. So an interface is just a contract, and it's virtual, meaning we don't actually implement any of this. You notice how it says virtual and then const equals zero, because we're not implementing it here. We're just designing the interface. This is what all plugins will have in common. They will have a function that returns a Q string called name, and a function that returns nothing called do something. You should also notice this Q declare interface. Right here is where we're declaring this plugin interface class as an interface, and it's got a string, and that might look familiar for some of you that work with com. I just use my domain name backwards with the application and then the class name with the version, but you can put pretty much anything you want in there. Now the actual plugin is a lot simpler than you might think. Notice how it includes cute plugin. That's a very big one. It uses cute interfaces macro and uses the plugin interface. There we go, that plugin interface.h. And it also inherits Q object and plugin interface. So this is both a Q object and a plugin interface, but you should note that plugin interface is not a Q object. Um, I've had no luck getting an interface as an object. Um, they're designed to be virtual and you can't have this dual inheritance thing. So if you want to make a plugin that has signals and slots inside of it, um, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of work because I haven't gotten it to work yet. Anyways, back to our my plugin class. It's QObject. It uses Q interfaces to say, hey, use this interface. And then it implements the interface. We've got our name and do something functions. And when we go in there, we can see how very simply it just returns strings. So we could have a bunch of plugins. Let's say they all have different names and they all do something different, like return a mathematical function value or something like your age divided by 12 or something like that. Um, one thing you should note right here is this Q export plugin 2 with the name my plugin and my plugin. That's the target and the class. It's very important that these match perfectly. Not these two specifically, but these match up within the project. This first one, the target, needs to match in your project file target equals that's where it's going to be right there and the other one is the class name my plugin so if those two don't match you're going to get some weird errors it'll compile and then when you go to load your plugin it'll just pop back a bunch of funky errors like couldn't find it etc etc et um, and the only other special thing is in the project file you notice the template is a lib or library that is, that's a DLL in Windows or an SO in Linux and the config, we have it as plugin release. One thing you should know about the Q plugin loader is it does some things like version checking. 
it'll make sure that the plugin is the same version as your application and it'll make sure that it's got direct access and a few other things. I mean you should really read the documentation to get a full description of this but we're going to cover the basics of it. So let's just give our plugin a good compile. All right, now that we've got that in there, let's look at the output directory of that, um, our application. Um, we've got a special folder in here called Plugins, and then we've got the DLL we just compiled in there. So that's where it's going to be looking for it. Well, let's just jump down into our application here. Whoops, close all these. Now you notice how the application also has plugin interface. The exact same file. Um, the reason being is the application and the plugin have to adhere to the same interface because the application has to know what's going on inside this plugin. It has to know that there is a function called name and a function called do something. Now in our application, very simply, I have a class called app class and a function called load all plugins. So when we go into app class, you can see it's very simple. Just two functions, load all plugins and load plugin with a file name. And it has, of course, Q plugin loader and plugin interface. Now, load all plugins just looks for the plugin directory I just pointed out and goes through and gets every file and then tries to load the plugin. Now, in the load plugin function, this is where the magic happens. What we do is we create a Q plugin loader, give it the file name and then we would say get an instance. What that does is it loads it in memory and it tries to create an instance of that plugin. Then we say if possible plugin, in other words if this pointer here is greater than zero, then we do what's called a Q object cast. Sounds very complex but really all it does is it casts it, turns it from just a normal Q object into what we tell it to, in this case the plugin interface. Remember that interface is the contract. So now that it is an interface rather than an object, we can do things like plugin name, plugin do something. Now if we go back out to our plugin here, and when you see we say plugin do something, if we look this up, it's going to just print out do something really cool here. So if we run our application, you'll see the current path is and then it'll say loading and it finds the plugin, the .dll file because I'm on Windows and loaded my plugin version 1, there's the name, and then it calls do something which prints out do something really cool here. Now that in a nutshell is how plugins work. Um, once again just to review some of the pitfalls you need to remember um, you need to have an interface. This interface has to be virtual in other words it's a virtual class you have to implement that interface and you have to use the Q declares. Be sure to include Q to plugin. You implement your interface here. And then you have to do a Q export plugin too. That way Q compiles this as a plugin. And it does all the special magic in the background so you don't have to worry about exporting macros and exporting functions and things like that. Everything's just done for you. Now, I know you're probably thinking that's it. This is the 100th video. I thought we were going to do something cool. Well, there's a reason why it's taken me so long to get here. This is Plugin Service, an application that I've been working on for a while now. Um, I should probably back up. Why do we program? Well, unless you're you know, getting paid to program, you, you program to solve a problem. I run Void Realms, and I have a side project called LaptopLocator.net. And no, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just going on my little spiel here. Um, what Laptop Locator does is it's a Windows service that sits in your computer. You don't even have to be logged in. And it contacts this website in the background. It says, ping, here I am. Here's my IP address. And then it looks up the IP address, does a geo, ge reverse geocoding. So it says this IP address is here. And I can tell you basically you know, what city and state you're in. And getting the IP address, you can obviously tell the provider, et cetera, et cetera. Um, helps people find lost laptops. Now the problem I have with this is if you go to the services, it's Windows only. See how it says Mac, sorry, some coming soon, Linux, sorry, coming soon.
It's Windows only because I wrote that in C Sharp with .NET. So that was my first hurdle. I wanted to make this cross-platform. So I researched Python, I researched Java, Ruby, a few other languages, and they just they were good at what they did, but they weren't quite what I was looking for. And that's when I found Qt. And like many of you, I resisted learning C++, and I probably tossed that beginning C++ book across the lawn about a dozen times until it finally sank into my brain. And then I went out and I grabbed some other books, like I have the uh, Advanced Qt Programming, really good book. I'm looking forward to finishing it. C++ GUI Programming with Qt 4, that is a very good beginner book. I just got the um, Introduction to Design Patterns with C++ with Qt. Uh, it seems to be an excellent book, but I have not read it yet, so don't take my word for it. And Foundations of Qt Development. This was an awesome book. I love this book. Now, no, I'm not getting paid or any sort of royalties for mentioning this. I'm just giving credit where credit's due. Um, some of the source code for these tutorials I actually found right in this Foundation of Qt Development. They have a chapter on plugins that I would recommend you buy the book and read it. But anyways, back to the point I was making here. Laptop Locator, I wanted it to be cross-platform. And I wanted it to have an extensible architecture, meaning I wanted it to have plugins because I get all sorts of weird requests. Well, I want to access my file re remotely. I want to turn the webcam on and take a picture of who stole my laptop. I want to format the hard drive, encrypt my files, download my tax returns, you know, and just all these things. Well, to keep up with these requests, there's an easy way and a hard way of doing it. The easy way is you just, well, keep modifying your program and updating it. The hard way is you keep modifying your, keep modifying your programming, updating it. But there's a much better way, obviously it's using plugins. That way you have an application and then you just distribute the plugins and update the plugins as needed. So what I've done here is I've created this plugin service and um, really a service, there's no real magic behind it, it's just a normal command line program. You can just use the Windows SC command to convert it into a Windows service and install it. Something we're not going to really cover but you can look that up on Google. Um, what this plugin service does Let's actually jump down. I've got a test plugin here. You notice the same thing. It's a plugin interface, just much bigger, has a lot more functions in it. It has a name, description, status, um, can trigger install so you can install a plugin remotely, uninstall it remotely, start it, stop it, um, list commands. For example, you can have a plugin, I don't know, like rename files or delete a directory or whatever you want it to do. Um, you can exec those commands, execute them. So you can give it a command and a list of arguments. Same thing though, it's got the declare plugin interface, etc, etc. And then the implementation is very similar to what you saw, it's just got a lot more in it. You know, like the install code goes here, start code, stop code, etc, etc. Um, exec is kind of interesting, if you type in command 1 it'll say you enter command 1, yay. Command 2 is you enter command 2, how sad. Um, just to demonstrate that it can do different things. Now the plugin service itself, this is a bit of a monster. It took me a while to really build this thing. You can see it's got a TCP server that starts on port 1234 and this is a fine example of what I mean by this is not really production ready yet. Um, in a production program you would give the user the ability to change the port. So this is more of a proof of concept application. Anyways, starts the server. The server has what's called a plugin manager and a command manager. Now, the plugin manager, where is he? This guy. This, the sole purpose for this class is to load plugins and then control them, start them, stop them, execute, install, uninstall, etc., etc. And then you've got this command manager. The sole purpose of this class is very simple. It takes the commands entered by the user, converts them into what it can understand, these enum objects. So if they type in help, it converts it to the help enum, and then just does a big switch and executes everything. Um, that's actually something we should touch on real quick here. Yeah, we use the Q meta object and Q meta enum to convert it into the actual value, and then it does a switch here in case you're ever looking to figure out how to do that. And then it has what's called a request and a response object. The request is obviously the request the user sent, and the response is the response back from the command manager. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now, the client is created every time 
a client connects to a server. Like, let's look at the server here. And you see how it's creating a plugin manager, command manager, telling the plugin manager to load and then start. So it's loading all the plugins and then starting them. Starts the server. And then when a client connects, it connects the command manager signal and slots. The command manager has a signal called response ready, meaning we've sent it a request, it's done its magic, and it pops back a response, and then we send that out to the client. And then the uh, the client has a request ready, meaning the client entered a command, and we want to send that to the command manager, which then parses that request and formulates a response. So. Seems very complex and convoluted, but um, this is a design pattern you should get very good at. Um, you want to make your classes um, very good at doing specific things. Don't ever make a class that does everything. You want it. Keep it simple, stupid. Make your classes very good at doing one specific thing. You know, one's a bit overkill, two or three things. But you know what I mean. Don't throw in the kitchen sink. So this is going to be my replacement for Laptop Locator. and the basic shell of this is it will load plugins as you can see we've got the loaded CLI plugin that's going to be a command line interface and then uh, loaded the test plugin um, it was originally named black ops and then I changed the name to plugin service because I'm probably going to use it for a couple different projects um, but you can see how it says listening so let's just dial into this thing and see what we can do here and this is kind of the combination of a couple different tutorials let's just do telnet one two seven zero zero one and you see we're connected so type help and there is a list of commands from the server so you see we can list we can install uninstall start stop exec so let's just I don't know let's just list and those are the plugins that are currently loaded so if we unload and let's say CLI plugin one dot DLL error plugin not found hmm seems I have a boo-boo in there but uh, this is another example of what I mean by not production ready but you can do some things here start all they're all started stop all they're all stopped so if you're looking to really make a plugin program this might be a good base or a good reference for you to go in and look and see how things work and see just how I did it um, not saying it's perfect. I'm sure, as you see, it has its fair share of bugs here, but it might be a good starting point for you. But this shows you the the power of plugins, if you will. Um, you see how we got CLI plugin one and test plugin one, and they both say start code here. These things could do two totally different things. Like uh, CLI plugin one could start a web server, and test plugin one could I don't know, like email, hey, this is the location of my laptop, that sort of thing. But because they follow the interface, the program can just call start, and then the plugin itself worries about the details. Whew, it's been a long, long winter, but uh, I wanted to get this done before the new year. So without further ado, Happy New Year. I hope everybody's safe in 2012. And if you want, you can jump out to my website, voidrealms.com, go to Tutorials, click on Cute and then look for the 100 tutorial. You can just search for it or you can just scroll down in through here and find it and get the full source code for both of these applications. I wanted to thank you guys for watching and I apologize it's taken me so long to get through my emails and stuff. It's I've had so much feedback it's just horrendous just to try to get through it all. So if you sent me a message and I haven't got back to you, no I'm not ignoring you. I just simply haven't gotten to your message yet. Anyways, Happy New Year everybody and uh, thank you for watching.